Hello, my name is Jonathan Palmer, and this is some fractal terrain that I've been whipping up in my spare time. So if you see over here on the right display, we have this strange structure lattice over here. It doesn't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I have a nice little uh, option up here where we can turn on panning. So now, now you can see this terrain much more noticeably. I, I can enable and disable the pan as, as we want. So we can sort of see that it's darker in lower regions and it's brighter in upper regions. I just did a bit of coloring there just so it's easier to understand exactly what's going on. Um, so we have, you can see the controls over here on the right. We can zoom in and out. So we can just get this single chunk of terrain spinning and we can look at the different parts of it. Um, we can pause it. Um, we can also use minus and equal sign to control some of the colors. So it's a little bit more vibrant and lively. Um, I also have a bit of um, height mapping coloring. So that way you can see it. You can see it in the white one where it's dark in the certain lower regions. But in this one, I have it change from like a red to a green at the higher altitudes. And you can use that to sort of like convey some some more depth information than just based on like what appears in front of other things. OK, um, I also have like a blue, which goes blue to white. Um, that's that's a full gray scale. And then there's gray white. So um, if we go back to the main one. Um, we can also, let me stop this rotation a moment, um, we can also use um, the QWERTY keys to remap specific regions. Um, the way that the entire, um, the way that the entire map is generated is I take the four corners and then I figure out the center, then I figure out a diamond around those that center point, and then each of those points I proceed to continue and do this recursively until I've mapped every single um, node in the grid. The grid is 257 by 257. I, I minus one. It's just so that way the, the math works out right. Um, so if I hit Q, it's going to remap a square region in the top left corner, but I'm a little bit rotated, so it might not be exactly the top left. Oh, there we go. So we see over here it remapped this region. If I hit Q again, it will continue to remap it. So what it's doing right here is it's taking this large chunk, a quarter of the full region, and it's just sending it through the recursive algorithm again. Um, it also, I have it apply a smoothing function that I've, I've set up to the entire grid, just so that way it doesn't look super jarring where it's connected. Um, I'll, probably, I'll probably take that out and tweak it later, but I can actually do the smoothing several times here. Oops. Let me get it into a color view mode. And then let's get a little bit closer. And let's regenerate a couple times. We can also use W, E, and R to remap different sections. As you can see, that large chunks are, are getting completely redone. And it's sort of like eroding the rest of it around. That's the smoothing function at work. Um, we can also use T to remap the center region. Or you can use Y to remap the entire section. So if we zoom in a little bit, and then we change the color to the red or to the red green scale, you can sort of see like the green up here, and then we can remap the entire world. But yeah, so this is some fractal terrain. I have the smoothing function is is a linear smooth of just taking the average of the adjacent points. Um, it's done with a diamond square. I use Bezier curves to smooth out the calculations and to make it a bit quicker. Um, thank you for watching. I'm John Palmer. Feel free to visit my website at www.jonathanpalmergd.com. I'm a game designer currently looking for work.